It is a, um, a bold kind of statement, you know, to say, yes, there's an objective morality. But I'm not making it recklessly or sloppily, you know, I don't think. I've thought about this a long time, it's my whole life. Um, it's really the, the core of my philosophy. I mean, they, it's the, it's, the core is probably the wrong route. It's, it's probably the condensation, the, the, the coalescing of, of everything that got me really interested in thinking was the fact that I drew this conclusion when I was very young. <clears throat> At least I asked the question when I was very young. And pursuing the answer is, is uh, you know, I spent my life doing that. Um, I don't really like getting into definitions of philosophy, you know, nihilism or relativist or any of this other stuff. Because to me, it's like saying, well, yes, I am a Christian, except I believe in the tooth fairy, and you know, on Thursdays I pet frogs. I mean, it just there's just no point in, you know, because it's always conditional. It's it's the standards just aren't very. I don't think they could be a standard for a philosophy anyway. Um, so to get to them in order, I guess, um, this uh, reducto ad, ad zerbium guy, you know, Mr. Peabody, I really liked the Mr. Peabody thing, by the way, that was really great because, uh, you know, that was one of my favorite cartoons when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, just, you know, the intelligent dog thing, I guess, just it does work. Um, so, you know, we've been over this and over, we just keep going back and forth, but I think we're just disagreeing over the meaning of words and even how, again, how the brain works. In Matt's video, this, you know, I think we run across the same thing because it's basically his contention that um, we really can't separate our intellect from our subjective conditioning. I, I would argue that, yes, the intellect depends on emotion to validate what it thinks. Um, a good idea, we validate it by recognizing it as good and by emotionally connecting to that idea. But the idea of principle, the idea, so that's the first word we'll deal with here is principle. Um, that's not something, it's not a subjective concept, it's a objective concept, it's a, it's a logical concept. And <clears throat> what I'm saying is, is this, this whole conversation should be based on the idea that we're talking about principles. I'm not talking about anything subjective in my opinion. It's, you know, <laughs> it's just my opinion, but yeah, th my point is, is that I'm attempting to talk about a logic-based theory, not, um, you know, subjective opinion or subjective impression or subjective feeling. Um, so anyway, back to the brain thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we, we, it's, we got this lizard brain that's reflexes, that's really on automatic. Uh, then this conditioned brain, that's all the emotional crap, all the baggage, all the conditioning. And so when you talk about a flavor of ice cream and that it is meaningful, I mean, you, you define meaning as, okay, it is a truth that you like a certain flavor of ice cream. I'm not talking about what you like. That's a conditioned physiological response unique to yourself. I'm talking about something that's universally true, like ice cream is 27 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever the... <laughs> The, the concept would be our ice cream is made of cream and milk or you know it's it's an analytical description not an opinion not a subjective impression not a subjective feeling so to me you can't even use using the word meaning in a subjective concept is that so that's that's the second word we need a definition of meaning meaning doesn't in my opinion have anything to do with subjective conversation that's then we're talking about impression and then we're talking about being awed and then we're talking about being inspired and then we're talking these are a different set of words meaning is an evaluation that has to be strictly logical meaning isn't it's a definition meaning attempts to define the truth, not the truth for you individually, the truth about what is being perceived, what is being analyzed, what is being judged, evaluated. That's what meaning means. I mean, to, to, if, if, if we can't agree on that you know, a definition, if you're going to keep using your definition, I'm going to keep using my definition, then we're not going to get anywhere. So we need maybe need a new word, whatever it is. But I'm talking about an evaluation that has to do with efficiency, with productivity, with um, value uh, based on 
uh, an equation, not value based on an impression, not based on an emotion. So um, anyway, so back to the brain again. Um, so that's, you know, subjective, that's this conditioned part. That's this ignorant, dumb, conditioned mammal that has all the sociology and the, 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 the culture and the, all that crap. Um, and then we have this intellect on top. And none of these things are in complete control. They are all competing for control. The lizard, the gorilla, and the, and the man is all competing. They're all attempting to gain control of the beast but they can all act independently they can certainly act intermingled there's nothing saying they can't they de definitely pollute each other they definitely can pollute each other the point is that they can we can have objective reasoning that has no element of our own personal um, subjective impression built into it where we are doing it um, like a mathematical equation like something that, that we have no personal passion connected to no prejudices no bigotries and if we have them we are able to suppress them for the purpose of the principle because we are attempting to do something for principle not for personal um, expression so that's what i mean when i'm talking about meaning i am talking about describing the truth the universal absolute covers it all truth um, <clears throat> So anyway, and this, that's a, a, a hard task, and, and my point is this, there, this other guy, um, Danito4, 9474, whatever, you know, he basically, he gets it, you know, I mean, I guess my answer to his question would be both, I mean, I thought the way you described it, both ways work, and, and yes, the, the bottom line is the equation, <laughs> it doesn't sound too good, that's right, the, the end product is, is, is not a happy story. But really, um, you know, there's been a couple of comments where people talk about the universe as being perfect. To me, that's a childish, imbecilic notion. Why would we presume perfection? Why would we even presume productivity? Why would we presume anything good? The universe has, is, a, is a stagnant material force. It is, has, has no ethics. It has no values. There's no reason to presume that it would create productively. And so... Um, you know, to me, that gets washed out right away. That's just nonsense. That's just wishful thinking. That's just fucking religion, basically. But yeah, that's so, yeah, but I think it's worth talking about, even if it is a sad story, and even I'm, if, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making the contention that, um, you know, we might have to conclude that we, we are a waste of, of cosmic space, uh, at the worst, that we are an unproductive use of cosmic space in the fact that we create all this negative potential and have no real capacity to produce anything of real value. <clears throat> I mean, as, as, as evil as that sounds, <clears throat> I would argue that even our most orgasmic pleasure might only be the pleasure received from eliminating the pain that we are in. It is perhaps the most ultimate uh, stress reliever. So you, you take your most orgasmic joy all that might be is the feeling of relieving tension, relieving stress, relieving the negative, the, the pain of life. There's been people with the outie body experience, the near-death experience, you know, and they, they've talked about this whoosh, you know, this feeling of freedom and release. And um, yeah, because I think we are constantly in we are constantly in a negative condition. We are perpetually in a a cramped, a suppressed, a compressed, a pressurized, a unfree condition. And it is through these little things, these little experiences in life where we are able to release some of that pressure, some of that tension. Um, you know, we find a hundred dollar bill on the sidewalk, it makes us happy because it relieves some tension, leaves some, wow, a hundred dollars, I can do this or do that. We are basically balls of, of negative and, and it is through the release of that negative that we experience personally, experience pleasure. So, you know, in theory, uh, maybe there's nothing we can produce that would ever justify the cost of our existence. If you'll accept the notion that, that is the premise of my theory, yeah, I'm going, you know, I'm going over, so just count this as part two, I guess. Um, that uh, <clears throat> the only productive act is to eliminate pain.